Hey folks, welcome to Mogra Floss. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 6 for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 12 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Let's start with plastics. I'm going to create a new standard surface shader. Rename it to plastic. Assign it to the shader ball and run the IPR. And let's open up the shader itself. For plastic shaders, base color is the most important component and contributes the most to the final look. Let's use this yellowish orange color with the RGB values of 252, 190, and 10. And set the base weight to 1. Now coming down to the specular section, I mentioned in the specular lesson that for most materials and shaders, you can safely keep the specular weight and color at 1 and white to keep the shader as physically accurate as possible. In the past, we used to control specular weight and specular color and roughness and then define very specific IR values for each shader. Um, just forget that. In this new approach, specular weight is almost always one. Specular color is just a simple white color. And the IR value for most daily shaders like plastic, wood, concrete and so on can be around 1.5. The only thing we are interested in is the specular roughness. We add variations to the specular roughness with a grayscale texture and that adds all the realism we need. So add an image node and load this BW1 texture. I'm going to set it as the beauty shader. and set its scale u and v to 2. As this map will be connected to the specular roughness, I'm going to change the color space to utility raw because we are in aces. I discussed aces in the introduction section and it will be discussed thoroughly in the rendering section. If we connect this map to the specular roughness, as we learned before, those dark patches are going to make the surface sharper at those areas. We want the opposite, so let's invert the image. A quick way to do it is going to be by using a complement or invert node. We want to add this node after the image node. A simple way to do so is that you can first select the node that you want to you want the next node to be after. Then press Ctrl Tab and search for the node you want it to be added after. In this case, it's complement. Now if you press Enter, it will automatically be added after that node. Now the image is inverted. And finally, let's add a RAM float node after the complement and connect the RAM float node to the specular roughness input. And set the standard surface shader as the beauty shader. Uh, I use the RAM floats node to be able to adjust the texture values. As soon as we add this variation to the specular roughness, now we get a much more realistic shader. The map is a bit too contrasty and I'm looking for something more subtle. So I'm going to select the darkest values using my RAM floats node and increase them to something like 0.085. Now the sharper reflections become a bit rougher. Then I'm going to select the brightest values of my texture, which are responsible for these rough patches and set them to around 0.5. Now they become sharper. So this is the map after the complement node. And this is it after we adjusted its values using the RAM float node. So using this RAM float node, we made the uh, darker values a bit brighter to make the sharpest parts a bit rougher and we also made the brighter parts quite darker to make the rougher parts much sharper and that is the shader we get. In terms of importance of components for plastic shader or anything similar now we need to work on the subsurface scattering so open up the subsurface scattering section 
set the weight to around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Depending on the particular plastic, the SSS weight can be quite low or high. You need to look at your reference image and see if uh, it has a lot of SSS or not, and then decide on the subsurface scattering weight. Set the radius to around one centimeters. For the color, I'm gonna copy the base color and paste it here as well. And this really adds quite a lot to the overall realism of the shader. It's beautiful. The next thing to consider is to work on the bump mapping. For most surfaces, you need an overall unevenness that can be achieved with a simple noise and then more high frequency details, which you can just reuse the specular roughness map for it. Now let's add a bump to the node. Now, should we use the original map or the inverted version? If I set the complement shader as the beauty shader, we know that these white patches are making the specular reflections rougher and the dark patches are making the surface sharper. If we consider bump map, these white patches will add bump and dark patches will add indent. And that is what we want. So connect the complement to the bump map input of the bump to the node and bump to the node to the normal input of the shader and set the shader as the beauty shader. Uh, the bump amount is clearly too much. Let's try 0 0.05 centimeters. Still too much. Let's try 0 0.01. You know, bump mapping can be a bit tricky. So when I add bump mapping, I tend to scale up the render to see what is happening in the final render. So let me draw a region and set the scale to 200% in the IPR. Now you see even 0 0.01 centimeters is too much for a fairly smooth plastic surface. Let's reduce it to something like 0 0.002 centimeters. I think this is good. We don't want to exaggerate anything. Subtle and little is always better. So that's the high frequency details. Let's disable the region and set the scale back to 100%. Now let's quickly add that general unevenness to the surface using a noise node. Most of the materials and surfaces surrounding us in real life are not made perfectly. It's not going to be perfectly smooth. There is some sort of waviness to it. And if you take a look at any reflective surface around you, you can see that overall waviness and unevenness to them. So add a noise node, set it as the beauty shader, set its scale to around 13. Now connect it to a bump 2D node and connect the bump 2D node to the normal input of our main bump to the node in the chain. Now, if I increase the bump height in the new bump to the node to something like five centimeters, you can see that's the type of unevenness that I'm talking about, but we want it to be subtle here. So let's set the bump height to around 0.4 centimeters. Now let's see what we get. Now this is a pretty good plastic shader and you can call it a day. One other thing that you can add to your shader to make it more realistic is to make the perpendicular faces a bit sharper compared to the parallel faces to the viewing direction. We can do that simply using the coat section of the shader. We talked about this specific topic in the coating lesson. For now, let's set the coating weight to around 0.5 and coat IOR to around 1.2. So the coat will be limited to only the perpendicular faces and decrease the roughness to 0 
and this will add another level of realism to the overall shader. We can go ahead and add a bit of variation to the coat roughness, but this is enough for now. Now let me show you a final render for this shader. And here it is. Now the good thing is that this whole shader is being controlled with one map that is connected to both the specular roughness and bump input. If you load another texture, you would get an entirely different look. Now let's quickly turn this into a red plastic shader, duplicate the original one and assign it. And we can rename it to plastic red or something like that. Now we just need to change the base color and the SSS color to any other color we want. Let's go for a red color with the RGB values of 184, 37 and 37. And copy the same color to the SSS color as well. I think the roughness map can be adjusted a bit. I just want to make this rougher parts a bit sharper. Specular roughness map is not that contrasty. So select the RAM float node and decrease the Y value for the second point to something like 0.4. Now let's see what we get. And I can just show you the final render for this shader as well. Here it is. Very nice, very nice and touchable. So that's about the plastic shaders. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, Vray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.